With so many teenagers and young players in the first team, it's hard to imagine seeing many more break through. But you know what? Maybe I am leaning a little bit too much into those Corfian principles about La Masia being the gateway to filling the rest of the squad. Because there's a number of La Masia players still ready and willing to join the first team when called upon. In all actuality, financially, the club may not have many other options other than to continue to promote from within. Especially looking at last January and all those reinforcements who came in, even in a big summer transfer window, the club also wants to get rid of a bunch of other players. So you're talking about spots 21 through 25 and then 26 through 30 to fill out for Copa del Rey and the Spanish Super Cup and wherever else Xavi might need them. This time around though, because of the state of the club, you already know a bunch of those Barca B names. Or Barca Atletic, I'm really going to have to get used to that over the course of this video. Or at least, I want to say before the recent weeks, you did know the names of those Barca B players and they might be now on their way out. Because it is a bit risky to do this video now. We're not entirely sure which players are going to continue on with Barca Athletic, which players are getting promoted slash being loaned out, and which players are going to be brought in from the Juvenil A or the U19s. Barca B, all we know, is going to see a major overhaul that's not just the name change. And that's going to have to be a real emphasis on development for Sergio Brazuan's squad. Wins are probably going to be really hard to come by playing a bunch of 18 and 19 year olds on the regular. He's likely to lose 11 or 12 of his 14 top players from a season ago where they barely were able to survive in the Spanish third division. So before we go any farther, speaking of the Barca B exodus, you're not missing in this video Honda Oriana, Arnel Comas, Santiago Ramos Mingo, Gerard Peque Fernandez, or Ferran Chukla. They were all already transferred out or allowed to leave on free transfers, but there are still a ton who have already been around the first team, including going to Australia at the end of the season. So some could prove their worth in the preseason. That group is Arnaud Tenas, Mika Marmol, Alex Balde, Alvaro Sanz, Antonio Aranda, Izzy Abde, and Ilasha Komash. Abde will likely get promoted while others are either loaned out or stay with Barca Athletic. I also won't highlight Pablo Torre here because I think he'll be playing in the first team. 18-year-old winger Fabio Blanco, who scored four goals after joining from Eintracht Frankfurt in January, will be expected to be one of those players who stays with the second team and becomes a main protagonist with Sergio Bazuan's team. As I keep reiterating, it's a bit risky to do this in mid-January when a bunch of these contracts are due to expire January 30th and not all of them have been renewed just yet. Just know that if one or two of the players that I do name goes elsewhere this summer, it says a lot about the interest that other clubs have in those top prospects in La Masia. Last summer, as I was preparing this same video, it was Iker Bravo, who at the time was probably Barca's highest number nine prospect, and he went to Bayer Leverkusen because he immediately got first team football, at least for one appearance, and who at the time reportedly left because Barca wanted him to stay with Juvenile Bay, aka the U18s, instead of the U19s. Leverkusen also clearly offered him a much more clear path to the first team, and I think his first team debut last year was likely part of that pitch that the club, that being Leverkusen, made to Bravo. So you have waited long enough to hear some of the names, and we're going to begin with basically Bravo's replacement in the academy. The closest number nine in terms of Bravo, and now being the closest number nine, I think, to the first team. And that's the U19s and this coming season, Barca Athletics, Victor Barbera, who last season for the U19s scored 23 goals and collected 8 assists, beating Ansu Fati's record from three years ago. The 17-year-old still hasn't filled out yet and is a ways away from the first team number nine spot, but that's more than okay. This was only his second season with the club, technically his first full season with the pandemic limiting youth football. Having arrived from local CF Dom in 2020 and first getting his start at CE Sant Gabriel. He had one goal in six appearances in the UEFA Youth League, and step one of next season is making a bigger impact in that competition. Keep an eye out for Fabian Luzzi, who came with a lot of promise a few years ago from Mario Vallecano, but it just hasn't gone according to plan. And also keep track of Danny Severa, who returns to the Juvenil A and Barca B after leading Dom's U19s, the highest level at Dom, with 13 goals. Speaking of the UEFA Youth League, it should be noted that while they did crash out of the competition last fall, they were much better, that being the U19s under Oscar Lopez as the season went along. By the end of the year, they had won the Copa de Campeones, and there's a number of players more, that being a few more names that I want to hit on that you're likely to see with Barca Athletic next season. Astanas Pedrola made his first team debut last season, the only one for the UEFA Youth League to do so. And I'm interested to see how the right winger adjusts to life in Barca B next season. This year, he debuted for Sergi Brazuan's team and made seven appearances with one goal, but it was a rather up and down year for the 18 year old between the U19s and Barca B. Remember, this was also his first year at the club, having arrived on a free from Royce last summer. And you've heard me say the name Alice Garrido before, and so I'm going to say it again. 
The 18-year-old oscillated between the U19s and Barca B last year as well, making six appearances for the latter, even scoring a goal and giving an assist, plus his four goals and 11 assists as a key player for Juvenal A. Don't be thrown off by his age. Yeah, he's a year older than Gabi, but he could provide depth down the line. He's a bit more box-to-box -box than teammate Chus Alba, the 19-year-old who I've mentioned in multiple seasons before. Alba was unfortunately injured quite a bit in the spring, and it's hard to tell where he stands. His contract is up at the end of the month, so this may be the end of his time at the club. Another one, unfortunately, on that path. Even with a hot and cold year, he still had 7 goals and a team-high 15 assists with the U19s, so I do hope he sticks around. Injuries are tough, though, for young players. Remember Angel Alacan, one of the best winger prospects in the academy? He missed the entire season with an injury, and even at 18, will likely be back with the U19s next season. And it's totally fair to stick with that U19 group that's going to be with Barca Athletic next season, because there is so many of them, so here's a few more. Tati Wiad and Diego Almeida will likely be the center-back pairing, maybe even the starting center-back pairing, for Barca Athletic in the fall. And between those two 18-year-olds and another 18-year-old center-back in Arnau Casas, I've not the slightest guess as to which of the three has the best chance for the first team at this point. Almeida has always had the highest ceiling due to his ball-playing abilities from the back, but I can tell you he's got that Eric Garcia part of his game, and he's also got some of the Eric Garcia defense in his game too, if you know what I'm saying. Riyad is a more well-rounded prospect, but I'm not sure what skills he'll have that will translate to an elite level just yet. The same can be said of Arnal Casas, who of the three is still very much physically maturing and could play a bunch for the U19s. To their left will likely be Alex Valle, who made his Barca B debut last season out of necessity. He's never been spoken about with the highest ceiling, he's just a solid all-around left-back who is still developing. With the lack of left-back options in the academy, the 18-year-old will get some opportunities to show what we've been sleeping on. In front of them is a the defensive midfielder Mark Casado, who does look like he'll be staying and signing that contract renewal. He is a natural pivot, he can tackle some as well, using timing more than pure athleticism. And to me, the 18-year-old is one of the more interesting players for Barca Athletic next season. If Barzwan gives him the keys to the castle instead of Sanz or Mateus Pereira, he could be the most important player in the squad, for better or worse. Due to being a natural pivot, I think if he stays on this current trajectory, that being very similar to a Manchu from a few seasons ago, who is now a first-team player in the Liga, I think Casado is just going to have a good career. But if he does take that leap forward, he could get a tryout in the first team next preseason, and we'll see how that goes. A final four notes about Barca Athletic as we know it going into next season is a 19-year-old Colombian right winger, Juan de Fuentes, who scored 16 goals and 7 assists last year with Juvenal A, will likely join his fellow teenagers if he renews his contract. I didn't name that many other midfielders, though, because as Emre Demir arriving from Turkey, there are others for the U19s that could fill in, like Jorge Alastui, Fermin Lopez, or the aforementioned Chus Alba. An attacking midfielder from Girona, Unai Hernandez, will also start with the U19s and could find his way to Barca Athletic. And lastly, next up for a bunch of these players is the Mediterranean Games in Algeria at the end of this month with the Spain U18s. It's goalkeeper Ander Estralaga, Casas, Blanco, Akomash, and Bale. Now down to the current U18s and U16s, many of which will be promoted to the Juvenil A or the U19s, or they'll stay with the U18s, or potentially even stay with Cadet A depending on their age. Obviously, as I always do, there's a huge disclaimer here. When you're talking about 16-year-old players, a lot could go right, sure, but a lot can also go wrong, so there's the greatest bit of hesitation whenever I'm naming these players. But the reason I do name this bunch is because, at worst, I do think many of them will have some kind of professional careers where they do have some success, regardless of the level. Of the list I'm about to share with you, all of them are 16 years old, except in the latter two, who are even younger than 16. But this is an indication of that 05-06 group having a ton of potential. Last year, Juvenil Bay of the U8 teams was led by Hugo Alba's 11 goals, taking the place of Igor Bravo, and arguably becoming the number 9 in the academy with the most potential. Behind him on the wing was Danny Rodriguez, an attacking threat who showed off his stuff at the U18. Rodriguez has got a bit of sauce, and I'm interested to see him develop as the competition gets a bit bigger and stronger. He did already make his Juvenil A debut last season, so next season he should be relied on to be one of the leading figures under Oscar Lopez, who also handles the UEFA Youth League. And then for Cadet A, which is the U16s, it's a team that not only do I use the most hesitation for, but it's also the first level where I'm willing to kind of give you names. I think anything less than a Cadet A leveled up in the U16s are players that we just don't know enough about just yet. A few of this bunch will be moving on to the U18s, including 18-year-old goalkeepers, Aaron Jakabisvili from Hungary, and Diego Kocin from the US. Right back Jan Kolome, a position of need in the academy, is one of the more promising fullbacks at any level for sure. American Adrian Gill also had to be mentioned here, a central midfielder who is coming along nicely, with obviously a long way to go before the first team. 
Right winger Arno Pradas, who's been one of the top goal scorers at any age group he's been in, will make the jump to the U19s as well. If 16-year-old Pradas gets a chance in the UEFA Youth League this season, though it may be a bit too soon for him, I'm interested to see how he stacks up against kids a few years older than him at that level. Now for the final four, and the four that I might think have the highest ceiling from this cadet A squad from last season. Center back Landry Ferre, who is still just 15, I say just 15 because I think we've known about him since he was 11 or 12, has a ways to go as a player, but has kept a consistent level of excellence while consistently playing years up. He missed four months this season, which actually saw the rise of fellow 15-year-old center back Hector Fort. But it's great to see Ferre back and healthy again. Back to his 16-year-old for the next one is the pivot, Pau Prim. Of anybody in the academy, he does the best Sergio Busquets impression, which obviously catches the eye. But then again, so did Sergio Semper and many, many others. Yet, the Barcelona-born Prim has a keen understanding of the pace of the game. His understanding of where and when to deliver the right ball are the skills that I think could serve him very well in the future, which isn't right now yet. And lastly, since he did play for the Get A last season, it's finally time, yes, it's finally time on this channel to highlight the 14-year-old who scored 24 goals with the U16s, Lamine Yamal, who will be 15 in July. Remember, he's still two years younger than when we saw Ansu, Pedri, or Gabi in Barcelona's first team, so continue to hold those horses as tight as you can. I'm going to start my sentence with a disclaimer I always have, everybody be careful. But I can also say, with a bit of confidence, that he probably has the highest potential of any player, that being any player, from Barca Athletic all the way down to the U16s. That's basically every player from the ages of, I mean, he's 14, going to be 15, but 16 to 19 at the moment in the academy. So that three to four year window. Even at this age, he's just better than everyone around him. He can dribble, he can pass, he can shoot. He's a complete attacker in the youth levels. He'll likely stay with the Cadet A again next season, what being 15 and all, but don't be surprised if you see his name in a Juvenile Bay starting lineup in the fall and maybe even a Juvenile A starting lineup in the spring. He's ahead of the curve as he's always been in La Masia. He can play on the right wing, left wing, or through the middle. And I want to be perfectly clear again, don't lose your mind when Xavi has him in a first team training this upcoming season. He's been doing that with a bunch of youngsters from the U16s to U19 levels. And Yamal is a choice that makes sense. If he can keep a good head on his shoulders and keep this up, we're still talking multiple years away if he ever makes it, but so far, at least at 14, he's been one of the more promising 14 year olds that I've ever seen come through the academy, at least for the last 10 years or so. But again, and I can't reiterate this enough, there's a chance between understanding his great yet to be fulfilled potential and overhyping a play with a lot more growing to do, literally growing to do, before we start to annoy him as the next anybody. Yeah, so as always, I threw a ton of disclaimers, I kept throwing disclaimers and don't overhype and all those warnings here in this I guess a hypocritical La Masia video, but you get the point here. I always like to be careful. Like I said at the start, Xavi will trust youngsters. Even bringing in Pablo Torre, giving him that call saying, hey, I could definitely see you in my first team next season, even competing with Pedri and Gabi and maybe Nico Gonzalez all for midfield spots with Kessier, Frankie de Young if he doesn't leave, and Sergio Busquets. How many youngsters we do see in the first team next season is very much up for debate. But I think the number will be rather small, just based on the number of teenagers still left in the first team at the moment. We've already mentioned it's Pablo Torre, it's Ez Abde who is really going to get the opportunity with Dembele leaving on that wing, especially if there is no replacement coming in due to financial restraints. Those two, I definitely expect to see. Maybe even with an occasional Elasha Komash, if I had to guess. But again, that doesn't mean that there isn't plenty of talent waiting in the wings for the coming years when it's finally time for that golden generation, the sacred cows at Barcelona to finally ride off into the sunset and get ready for that new generation that is very much already in the first team. And as I warned you at the start too, let's just see how many of them stay and renew their contracts come June 30th. And hopefully they do, and hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a like, remember to subscribe, and as always, Forza Barca.